Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Happy Monday. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. It is CHGO Ranks Week. Lots of fun being had on allchgo.com and all of our social medias. We'll tell you all about that in a moment, including what today's show is about, the top 10 goalies in Blackhawks history. Before we get into it, make sure you smash that like button on our YouTube page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Podcast listeners, follow, subscribe, whatever your app calls for, and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It's a great thing to do for us. And you should know, right now at chgolocker.com, there is a massive, massive merch sale. Mm -hmm. I'm rocking my CHGO uh, football shirt. Mario's got the Bear Down shirt on, Greg, and a Roosevelt's as usual, but there's probably a sweat-absorbing CHGO shirt underneath the Roosevelt at all times, just a nod yes. Uh, yes. Of yes, there is. is. <laughs> uh, all shirts and hats, $24 at the CHGO locker right now. Countdown to kickoff. Bear season is right around the corner, but stock up. We've got two new Hawks designs. You might know who they're about. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of new Cubs designs out. Yeah. Always new Bear stuff coming out. Jump in, stock up. I think if you get over 50 bucks, the shipping is free. So get two shirts and you're good to go. Yeah. Or a hat, you know, great deals going on right now at CHGO locker.com so before we get into our list of the 10 greatest goalies in blackhawks history you should know that all week this week chgo will be revealing what was voted on by our entire staff last week the top 25 chicago athletes of all time uh, and today numbers 25 through 21 were revealed yeah. and the hawks are represented on said list they are yeah you took part in the uh the great debate of uh, who would get on the final uh, top twenty-five list? How was that? It was fun. It, it's uh, you know what? It's I didn't a, have fun. It's the sort of thing <laughs> that you're never gonna f satisfy everybody. You're gonna leave your. You're gonna walk away from your list feeling dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. You're gonna think back on it saying, you know what? I should have put this person here or this person here. But you do the best you can, and I think we all did that. And some of the more controversial picks, I know there will be as the week goes on audio and video shared of those discussions of those arguments but i think you know as yeah. greg always says what's it, really the difference between seven and ten right. in the grand history of chicago sports right you could probably manipulate some people up and down or say some people should have made it but overall i think we i think we did a pretty decent I job i just know you, you're gonna just get so many idiots yelling at us for every stupid hey that's thing. you know what it's every day man if, what you sign up for what when is you make sports like this. but yelling idiots right that's true. You as got, long as they're engaged. You got three yelling idiots right here. Hey. So. <laughs> here exactly. Exactly. So let's do the, we'll reveal 25 through 21 of the CHGO list right now, and then we'll move on to our top 10 Blackhawk goalies of all time. Number 25 on the CHGO list is Candace Parker. A uh, couple years with the Chicago Sky, but very, very impactful years for her, including a championship and also, you know, local, did a ton. Uh, she's from Naperville. Uh, hugely successful local athlete. Richard Dent comes in at 24, Super Bowl 20 MVP, the sack man or sack machine, depending on who you ask. Uh, number 23, I think the best defender on the best defense in history, Dan Hampton, mm. comes in at 23. Number 22, he's going to be on the next list we do, Tony Esposito, Blackhawks goaltender, 15 years in Chicago, a great, great player and an innovator of the game. And coming in at number 21, Cub and temporary White Sox, Ron Santo. <laughs> true. So there you go. There's 25 through 21. We'll give you the next five tomorrow, and then the uh, the show will be Friday. That is correct. The full reveal, the whole argument show will be uh, aired on Friday, and I think <laughs> when it airs, I'll be like, damn it, I was wrong on a bunch of stuff. <laughs> but, hey, that's how these things work, man. Yeah. So yeah. It was it's, a lot of fun. It's like every fantasy hockey or fantasy football draft I ever do as I'm in the middle of it I'm like that's a good pick I like that pick and then I get to the end and I look at my full roster and I'm like this roster sucks <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah there were a few guys that when we did the voting for the top 25 I left off and then when I saw like the f results I was like son of a how did I forget yeah. that guy yeah. there's just so much to do but I know for a fact if my dad was still around he'd be bitching about Ron Santo my dad hated Ron Santo, said he was so overrated, 
Said he was oh. the most unclutch player in the history. Oh. Got most of his stats when it was either they were either up seven nothing in the eighth or down seven nothing in the eighth. But if it was a tie game and there was a runner at second base, there was no way he was getting a hit. So he I also, have to go. I have to go on that. I never saw him play. Also, yeah. from what I understand from talking to the, my one uncle who likes the Cubs, um, much like Frank Thomas was a bit surly in his day, was not always the friendliest with the fans, and then kind of had a reinvention of mm. cuddly old Ronnie when he saw that I might not get in the Hall of Fame because of the way I treated people, kind of had a change of heart. And look, we all mature as we get older, right? Uh, very few people are fully matured by the time Ron Santo retired, um, and he did end up being a decent guy, but I think that hurt him a little bit uh, in the eyes of fans and in the eyes of Hall of Fame voters. So it's always an interesting conversation. Uh, no one will ever love the list. And as I said on Twitter, the ones you like, those are me. And the ones you don't like, that was Herb. That's true. So just get in touch with Herb and, uh, <laughs> yep. yeah, complain complain to him and give me all the praise. That's Speaking of Surly, at Herb. At <laughs> yeah. I got to say, yeah. golfing with Herb Friday, was a, that was fun. Just, I love that guy. Herb's the best. Yeah, how was everyone's uh, round? It was very Friday. nice we got to play with Spencer, who is a pro. I was going to say. Because <laughs> if it was me, Jake, and Herb, we'd probably still be out there <laughs> looking for our golf balls yeah yeah when we we had to download the uh an app that let you live live track all your scores uh on you know scorecard and everything you could also see the the leaderboard for all the all the groups all at the same time and i remember checking in at one point and i saw jay jake uh herb and spencer were like minus six and i texted jay i was like is spencer minus six for you guys he's, <laughs> spencer like, was minus he's six. like yeah yes. that's yeah. that's our score i'm like okay i yes. saw spencer hit a couple couple golf oh balls and I was like this guy is like pro level yeah he, and he, he is a pro he's a pga too. pro he yeah. looks the part he had those, and yeah. he he there's one doing. point where he goes you know what I mean? i think i'm gonna try to hook it around those trees and if i can get it over i'm like you know where your ball's going that's amazing <laughs> and he did it sure enough he hooked it around the trees and i'm like damn that yeah. was impressive i think over 18 holes it was a scramble best ball as everybody yeah. knows um i think between me jake and herb our shots got used maybe five times through you, all 18 nice. holes. You took part. That was nice. Yeah. yeah. I had one really nice drive. I'm like, I feel good about that. We're going to use that one. And then Spencer out drove me by 75 yards. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Windy go. City you Hockey was out there Friday. Thanks yeah. for coming up. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's, your, there's your nemesis, your Twitter nemesis about uh, Tatar and Nyquist. <laughs> They're the same guy, Philippe. They're the same freaking guy. <laughs> They're the same guy. <laughs> Even though they were on the same team at the same time. <laughs> yes. Two guys, one jersey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, really. Okay, let's get to our list. Um, oh, I want to talk about my golf game. Yeah, how, how was, how was yeah. your group? It was your wonderful. Group. We had fun. We, fin- we, we like part every hole except for like three in a, two in a row we birdied. So that was nice. You know. uh, I do have to say, too, we did buy on the beat the pro hole. You can buy oh, yeah. a zero. I didn't. We didn't. Did do you that. buy the zero? We bought the zero. Oh, okay. Um, so like, no so what you do is you mark a one on that one, and then you deduct one from your next hole. That's how That's you get it because the app won't let you put a zero yeah. in. I didn't play, but I spent the day on a golf cart driving around with Vinny Duber of our uh, White Sox. Team. That looked like fun. That yeah. was a great day. Vinny and I, you know, got to, we talked a lot of music. We talked a lot of sports. Got to know each other a little better. Good day. And then I, we got to drive around and heckle everybody else. Yeah. Every time we drove by Lawrence, he was mad at something. <laughs> I know you're. I, I, you know, I know you're shocked uh, to hear that, guys. Yeah, that he was mad. Yeah. It's my standard standard look on a golf course. Yeah. I had the we got to the uh, the beat the pro hole, and uh, we were like, all right, let's let's take her shot, because um, she said that we were like the thirtieth group to come through, and she'd only missed twice. I'm like, all right, fine. Well, we'll trust that. She hits it. It's going right at the hole. And then it lands about five yards short, right in the bunker. And I was like, "Well, that was money well spent. I could have done that." Oh, that's yeah. tough. But I mean, it was for charity, so it was it, it was good. But um, yeah, tournament turnout was great. Uh, the event was a lot of fun. We had a great day for it after being melted for the three days prior. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Thank goodness. Could yeah. you imagine if it Beautiful was the day. day before? I would have stayed home. Yeah, yeah, it was. We I set up your own died. tables. I had a conversation with. Uh, uh, one of the beverage cart workers, and, and she said that they had a tournament the day before when it was like 110. And uh, she said, like, I didn't sell any alcohol. I was just selling water. And I was like, eh, makes sense. When yeah, you're you know, it's brutal. about to die, you'd, you'd rather not did have you, alcohol. Did you have an water. uncomfortably large hot dog uh, at the turn? <laughs> no, but I saw <laughs> them. They, they, they were, were uh, they were plump. They yeah, were a mouthful. 
Yeah. They were girthy. They, they were, were some <laughs> large. They were delicious, though. Yeah, I definitely wasn't going to eat one of those uh, without the bun because of my gluten sensitivity. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I took everyone's uh, word for it. Could have. Yeah. Could have. Yeah. Well, it was a great time. So thanks, everybody, that came. And if you didn't, make sure you come next year. It was, yeah. it was amazing. Every CHGO event we do, I come away more impressed. Like, damn. Because I don't have any. We don't have any say in the planning. We just show up and golf. Yeah. And, even though my name on my golf cart was Jay Kawasaki. I did enjoy that. <laughs> that was cool. That's an autocorrect issue, I believe. Or just you're Potentially. cool. Or I'm just Kawasaki. Heir to the Kawasaki fortune. Yeah, yeah. that'd be nice. That'd be nice. All right, let's get to our list. Um, we're going to count backwards because that leads to suspense, you know? Y- yeah. Number 10 on our list of all-time Chicago Blackhawks goalies, Jeff Hackett. If we were ranking helmets... Jeff Hackett might be number two behind Eddie Belfort. One of the tops. Yep. Jeff Hackett's helmet was awesome. And this is a guy who played behind some really good players. And when he got his chance, took that chance and ran with it. He, did, he was a really solid starter for a few years. Uh, really liked Jeff Hackett. Like, among at his time, you know, best backups in the league. Um, really steady, you know, positionally. Never was going to hurt you. Never was going to lose you a game. And then finally got the opportunity to be the starter for a couple of years and did a really nice job. I like Jeff Hackett a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, this list was pretty easy for the top five. Yeah. Or six. And once you got to like seven, eight, nine, it was like, okay, you start looking through the numbers and you're like, Blackhawks have had a lot of Hall of Fame legendary goalies, but they've also had a lot of mediocre yep. to bad goalies. So Jeff Hackett probably was not a guy I would have thought was going to be on my top 10 list when we started this. But <laughs> no. when you look at the numbers, uh, it's there. I mean, his six seasons with the Hawks, 173 games, uh, and a 913 save percentage of 2.47 goals against average. Excellent. That's Vesna quality in today's game. Yes. Like, and I know a lot of that was as a backup. Um, I but his years as a starter, um, you would say 95-96, he had uh, – 35 games played, they didn't track starts, 9.916, 240. The next year, 41 games, 9.27, 2.16. Uh, and then 97, 98, 9.917, uh, 2.20. Excellent and eight years. eight shutouts that season. Yeah. I mean, that's you do that in this today's game. This coming up season, you have 58 starts, a, nine, a .197 save percentage, .22 goals against, and eight shutouts. You're probably winning the Vesna. Yeah, you got a good shot at it. You're and at least the finalist. The fact that he had eight shutouts, a 220 goals against, a 917 save percentage, and went 21, 25, and 11. Shows you how shitty that team tells was. Tells you all you need to know. <laughs> yeah, horrible team. Yeah, Jeff Hackett on a good team. Uh, it would have been interesting to see where he got them. Uh, and then uh, actually 1999, 2000 with the uh, Canadians. Had another good year. Actually got some Vesna love yeah. because he was playing for the Canadians. Funny how that works. Number nine on our list of top ten Blackhawks goalies of all time, Stanley Cup champion in two, 2010, Antti Niemi. Yep. 42 games overall with the Hawks over the course of two years, 37, 27, 8, and 5. He had a 9-10 save percentage, a 2.32 goals against, and seven shutouts. He yeah. was very solid and took over the back end of that year yeah. when Hue was bad. Yeah, I mean that's it's it's a he's a he's a guy who wasn't here for a very long time, but it's the impact that he made. Kind of like Candace Parker in our top twenty five. Like yeah. only two seasons, but came in and did exactly what she uh, was supposed to do for the sky. The Emmy came in and yeah, took o- took over in that uh 9 ten season. Uh, at a critical time, and you go back and you look at some of those playoff series, some of those games in that 2010, uh, that 2010 run. He was the difference maker in 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 some of those games, and you know, no no good Stanley Cup team is gonna is gonna come out, uh, you know, lifting the cup with just an average goalie who plays just average to the playoffs. You're gonna need a goaltender to step up and be special from time to time, and and he was able to do that uh, during that run. And hey, you win you win a cup in Chicago, you're going to get a lot of uh, a lot of praise for that, even if it's just for basically one full season of time. Yeah, full disclosure, I did not have him on my personal top ten ballot, just because it was one year essentially. Yeah, I know he was he had three games in 08, 09, but forty two games. To me, and yes, it ended with the cup, and he was great mm-hmm. in that twenty ten cup run. But 
to be best all time, you needed to have more than one season. And he wasn't even the starter for that full season. He didn't take that job mm-hmm. over from Christian Balhue until January, February ish of that year. And yes, the playoff run, magical, great, love him for it. But just the fact that it was only one full season and he wasn't even the starter for that whole year, I he was. I definitely thought about putting him on there, but at, in the end, I, I picked a couple other guys that was here for a long period of time. Sure. I mean, so obviously, it's a great argument, and I, my whole thing was he probably could have been the starter all year, but Quenville wanted to lean on the veteran and the big signing of Chris Ball yeah, Huey, understandably. Right. And Huey had had, was really good in Montreal before he joined Chicago. So it wasn't like some idiotic move or some just preferring a veteran. Huey had the track record, and you brought in Niemi as an international free agent, wasn't drafted, just kind of signed and, and brought in okay. with not a lot of expectations. But for him to join the team where they were as a backup, earn his job as a starter, and then be as good as he was in the Stanley Cup playoffs, looking back on that series, he was great. He was excellent in that in those playoffs. Like there were a game or two where he didn't have his best game as every goalie does right. during a playoff run. But for him to just like enter the league and all of a sudden you're thrust into a cup run and to hold it down and win, I think that was significant enough for him to get on my list. So yeah, there you have it. He is number nine on our list, which brings us to number eight, Nikolai Hobby Bulin. And before you chuckle, hey. Aside from Bulin Wall, that, that, that should put him in there. I mean, yeah, a nickname. Aside from his time with the Phoenix Winnipeg organization, where he played 284 games, he spent the second most time with the Hawks: 206 games, 91, 80, and 25, a 902 save percentage, which isn't great, but a 2.84 uh, goals against and six shutouts. He was a the first of the really big free agent signings the Hawks had. Uh, it was him and Jason Cullimore the year after they won, right, 05? Yeah. yeah. They brought the two of them in from the Stanley Cup champion, Lightning. And, again, not a very strong team by any means when Javi Bowen came in, um, but just provided steadiness, leadership, everything you wanted from a goalie, and uh, had a, a really fine, good, solid run with the Hawks over those uh, combined five years. Yeah. And people forget that he finished his career with the Blackhawks, yeah. a quick little stint in 2013-14. Not very memorable, but he did. Um, yeah, I mean, he was he was one of those guys. I remember when uh, when that signing happened being like, hey, like that's exciting. That's not really something that the Blackhawks usually have done the last couple of years. Uh, getting a guy, you know, who just won – well, not just. It was, you know, after the missed 4 5 season, but – most recent Stanley Cup winning goalie, like, you know, a guy that played a big role for, for that team, that can be that can be something that can move the needle for the Blackhawks moving forward. And yeah, I mean he was he was fine. He was he was in a time before they you know, really hit the uh uh hit the stride going back upwards. He was there um playing a playing a solid role. Well when you look at his stint here at the Hawks, his numbers got better as the team got better. His best year yeah. here was that 8 09 season. That year they went back to the playoffs, and that team went all the way to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, that was when he put up uh, a, a, one, a 9.19 save percentage and 2.33 goals against average in 42 games. So as the team got better in front of him, he got better. His first year was his worst year, but that was the worst team he had. So yeah. it's funny how that works out for goalies. Um, but he was yeah. also expected to be kind of the savior of that team and like make them good. Well, because yeah. coming off, you got to remember that 2004 Cup run. He was ridiculous. Was great. Yep. Like he played out of his head. Like he was never in all those years leading up to it with you know uh, the Coyotes and even with the Lightning. He was good, but he was never you know an Andres Vasilevsky. Yeah. You know Marty Brodeur Top level. Of the world, he was. Yeah. He was a very good starter, better than average, good starter. And then that, that cup run with Tampa in 04, all of a sudden it was like, whoa, who the hell is yeah. this guy? And then the, he cashed in on that in the Hawks. But that 08 09 season, he was really, really good. It's amazing He's, what happens when there's talent playing in front of you. Yeah, yeah, people right. forget, Nikola Ababoon started the uh, Winter Classic at Wrigley Field. Like, so much happened right after he left that it's easy to forget that 08 09 team, but that helped really plant the seeds for what was to come. Yeah. 
Uh, all right, we're going to do one more before we take our first break of the show. Number seven, I never got to see the guy play, but he's synonymous with Pat Foley and his uh, amazing goal calls, Murray Bannerman. Speaking of helmets, this one is just straight up <laughs> terrifying. Um, <laughs> it looks like some deranged clown, um, as most goalie helmets were in that era. Yeah. But Bannerman, solid uh, with Chicago, 288 games. Uh, 116 and 125, 880 save percentage, 384 goals against. But remember, it's a different time. Preferences. The this 80s. is the 80s. He had to face <laughs> Wayne Gretzky like seven times yes. a year. <laughs> like nobody had a goal against uh, a save percentage over 90, 90 back then. Before goalies were allowed to go to the ground to make saves, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Like stand up and kick the puck away. I'm gonna stand here and hopefully it hits me. <laughs> yeah, that was the goaltending style. But I think Bannerman gets a lot of credit for just being the. He kind of put Foley on the map with the better man calls, sure, which sure. were great. And uh, he's been around the team a lot. Did some broadcasting work as well. Um, so, yeah, Murray Bannerman. There you yeah, it. I got to interview him a few years ago. Real good guy. Um, I interviewed him when he was promoting when Cameo first started. Oh, wow. So when you, wow. you, you could get, like, you can pay and send a message yeah. to one of your friends or your wife from – her favorite C-list celebrity yeah. or <laughs> F-list. I'm on there. So, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it was when Cameo started and he wanted to promote it. So I, I was able to interview him. We talked about Cameo for like nine seconds. And then we talked about Pat Foley and hockey for the rest of the interview. It was a good <laughs> Perfect. time. Perfect. Solid. Do we think solid Cameo is on Cameo? Because that's when I, when you first said Cameo. Word I think up. Meant they word are. Up. Yeah. yeah. Oh. They, you were the, you were the athletic supporter on the outside of your pants. Correct. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Creative. Creative. I just like that our first comment of the day was from JF, and he was like, Batterman! Yeah. It's legendary. Yeah. Nobody could tell you, not nobody, but very few people could tell you if Bannerman was a good or a bad goalie, but they could do the they'll, call. They'll remember yeah. it. Yeah. It's iconic. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take our first break before we get to number six on our list. We should let you know, by the way, that the way we came up with this list, this would have been smart to start the show with, but oh, I'm rusty because sure. it's Monday. The three of us compiled our top ten. And then Greg said, you know, every one vote's worth 10 points, every two votes worth nine, et cetera, com- made a composite score, and that's our top 10. So, again, any issues with us, take it up with Herb. Yep. Yeah, it's all Herb's fault. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know what's not Herb's fault? Well, not much. Not much I can think of, honestly. The great deals oh. at Ray Chevy. Oh, of course. He had nothing to do with that. That's why <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> we love you, Herb. Are you in the market for a new or used vehicle? If you are, then we've got some great news for you because Ray Chevy in Fox Lake has just joined the CHGO, CHGO team, and we are thankful they are here. We are talking to the team at Ray, and they gave us this pledge called the Ray Price Promise. It's a guarantee that the price you see online is the price you pay when you go into the dealership. We found in many cases that other dealers will raise the price on you when you come into the dealership, saying things like, are you a recent college graduate? Are you active in the military? Are you a farmer? And in most cases, the answer will be no. And that's when the other dealers will raise the price on you. Sneaky, shady practices (laughs) saying that the price online included limited rebates that you don't qualify for. Well, at Ray, that's not the case. They aren't sneaky or shady. The price you see online is the price you pay with no add-ons to the price ever. In fact, Ray will do everything possible to find additional savings for you, which will make the price even lower than you saw online. As one of the top selling dealers in the Midwest, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and save big at Ray Chevy because they have over 100 Chevy Trax models available starting at $21,495. That sounds like a good price for a brand new automobile. And now through August 31st, all buyers can qualify for 0% financing, make zero payments until 2024 plus no money down and the and best of all, pay zero hidden fees with the Ray Price Promise. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or rayschevrolet.com serving the community since 1963, find new roads. And if you want to make some money towards that new car purchase at Ray's, CHGO has a weekly pick X and NFL survivor contest for everyone to participate in for real money. Here's how you enter. Head to splashsports.com slash CHGO. There's a link in our description as well. And sign up. You deposit your cash to get started, and it's just $10 to enter either. The CHGO Weekly NFL Pick X Contest 
First prize wins $2,700, all the way down to 10th prize wins $270. It is a place where you can win real money. And the Survivor Contest, $4,500 winner-take-all prize. We'll be running weekly contests all year, so be sure to keep that link handy. If you want to run your own contest and you're tired of being the commission on leagues, chasing people down with none of the reward, you can sign up to be commissioner right through our link and earn money for the contest you're already running with friends and family. Head to splashsports.com slash CHGO to join in. Lawrence is right there when you click that link. We'll have different contests coming out, <laughs> so we are stoked to compete with you and against you all season. Be sure to click our link in the description again. That is splashsports.com slash CHGO. Doing a bit of jazz hands, I've noticed in that photo. Yeah, it looks good. I'm just like, hey! You're greeting everyone on yeah. the Splash Sports website. Yeah. Splashsports.com slash CHGO. Splash Sports is hard to say. Splash Five sports. days after dental surgery. For the ah, record. Yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of CHGO and speaking of Lawrence and pictures of Lawrence, uh-oh. Tailgate season is quickly upon us. Yes. And yes, if you want to join us at the uh, official CHGO there, tailgates. There I am again on that photo. There he is. Same they are I'm awesome. on that one, too. They are hey, there I am. awesome. The tailgates are so great. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to join us. Uh, AllCHGO.com is always navigate over to that events page, and you will see our list of tailgates. They're amazing. I, I can't tell you enough. There's multiple beer options from Goose Island. All you can eat food from Firewater Barbecue. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. It is the biggest and best tailgate party in the Windy City. You're right there by Soldier Field. It's at Roosevelt well, and. No, what, so, no that's no, the thing. We are, oh, it changed. I'm sorry. We got a new location. So this we're year. joining up. Oh, with, my God. It's uh, even closer. Yeah. The, Ch the Chicago Tailgating Club, I believe their name is. It's, nice. They've been there for over 20 years. It's a, it's a party. It's yeah. right. It's a, like, I think, gosh, I don't want to say it wrong. I think it's. Cermak and Wabash. Cermak and Wabash. Yeah. yeah. And it's yes. a huge lot. We'll be taking part of it, but there's gonna probably like a thousand people there every Sunday for a Bears game, and we do a shuttle. We'll do a shuttle from there to uh, the bridge at eight. What is it? Eighteenth Street yeah. there. Um, and you don't. You, you also don't game. need a ticket to the game yeah, to come. To yeah, the, yeah, to if, come yeah. To but if you're going though, don't think. Oh, it's far away. No, it's yeah. It's Just, actually perfect because you're right by an L stop there. You come to the tailgate, and then take our shuttle. Yeah, and the Metro Electric's right there too. Yeah. If you're coming from the South Burb. So they're awesome. Make sure you join us. AllCHGO.com. Go to that events tab. And of course, if you're a diehard, you're going to save. So become a diehard today. AllCHGO.com. All right. Next on our list is our audience is impatiently waiting for us to mention this guy. Number six, Charlie Gardiner, the goaltender behind the uh, 1934 Stanley Cup. Just insane numbers when you look back. I mean, again, we're talking about eras. For his seven-year NHL career, a 2.02 .02 goals against average <laughs> with 42 shutouts. It's pretty good. Yes. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do some quick math here. Pretty good in... Uh, Two-time Vezina winner, uh, three-time All-Star. I'm sorry, four-time All-Star. Uh, the crazy thing about Gardner is that after they won the 1934 Stanley Cup, uh, during the playoffs, he was starting to act weird. Like his behavior was kind of erratic, chalked it up to nerves. Uh, and then right after returning home after the season, he fell into a coma. He had a brain tumor. And two months after the Hawks won the Stanley Cup, he died at the age of 29. Crazy. Crazy. And as Crazy story. Our buddy Windy City Hockey pointed out, he is the last goalie to be captain of a team that won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Born in Edinburgh, Scotland, too. Not, a, not exactly a hotbed of Hockey Hall of Famers, <laughs> but they got one. No. No. Uh, he had 42 shutouts in his 316 career games. That is, I just did the math, that is one shutout every seven and a half games. That's pretty good. That's, <laughs> Jesus. That's pretty damn <laughs> That's good. That's pretty good. I know he was playing in, a, in an era where goals were very yeah. hard to come guy. Guys shot the puck 45 miles per hour that never got more than two inches off the ice. <laughs> but still, me. that's pretty damn and impressive. And he wasn't wearing a helmet. He's in the Hall of Fame, he's in the Hall of Fame for, for a reason. And then uh, n uh, only mit played uh, almost all those 362 game, uh, 316 games in a row. His mm -hmm. Six of his seven seasons, he started every game for the Blackhawks. Very great. Here's what's... Uh, a, a wild stat line. In 1928-1929, he played in all 44 games. He was seven, seven wins, 29 losses, eight 
ties. Of his seven wins, five were shutouts. He had, he had a yeah. 185 goals against, a, a 1.85 goals against, 29 losses. Gave up 85 goals in 44 games and only won seven of them. I'm guessing that was a bad team. Insane. The <laughs> next year, uh, 44 starts, 21, 21 wins. Uh, he had a 242 uh, goals against, second highest of his career, three shutouts. Uh, actually got some MVP votes that year. And then, uh, yeah, the next next uh, four seasons, all-star, 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 uh, and another all-star, two Vezinas, and then, yeah, the Stanley Cup. Yep, his final season, the year they won the Stanley Cup, 33-34, 48 games in the regular season, uh, a 1.63 goals against average, and 10 of his 17 wins were shutouts. It's crazy. It's wild. That's crazy. Wild. All all doing it with like basically pillows as pads and no no helmet. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh AJ says Gardner should have a number one banner right next to Glenn Hall's and adds that he was also either the first or second team all star each season after they started that. So yeah, I mean yeah. NHL legend, I think probably a little bit lost to time. Um, yeah, but hey, the more sure. conversations like this we have, we can kinda bring them back into the conversation. You never know. Again, we're a couple years away, what, three years away from the 100th anniversary of the Blackhawks, mm -hmm. and I think that's a great opportunity to educate fans on the guys that were here long before. Because I think even even young Hawks fans know about Hall and Makita and Esposito them, yeah. and Savard and all yeah. them, right? But I think, the, and even I had to catch up when I wrote the book about the era before those guys. Like, in my mind, Blackhawks, I know it doesn't, but in my mind, Hawks hockey starts with Hall and Makita, and that's what I know. Mm-hmm. Before that, I had to do a ton of research about it and figure it all out, and I learned a ton. And Charlie Gardner, to me, in the process of writing that book, was one of the most interesting characters yeah. uh, that, that I came across. Just an incredible story and tragic and scary. Right. I mean, yeah. Jesus, you, you win a Stanley Cup, and two months later, you're dead. It's, it's unreal. Very, 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 very scary. Yeah, so. that's, that's something I hope that the Blackhawks actually do uh, undertake is some sort of history um, – whether it's an initi some sort of historical initiative for the hundred year, or you know, who knows what you know what might be part of the fifth third expansion that is we're assuming is coming and going to be approved, or what might happen with the you know the United Center over the next couple of years, maybe some additions or whatever. Um, but some sort of like Blackhawks historical like museum or exhibit or something like that, I think would be really cool for the team to set up because yeah, like like you like I in my mind, like Blackhawks history that I can like think of and like remember some things because I read about them is in starts in the sixties, but yeah. everything before that, it's just like, I have to go back and be like, remind myself about some of those things. And, and like, even for me, like I, I never saw, you know, Hall, Makita, Esposito, never saw, you know, Savard play, never, never saw those guys all play um, for the Blackhawks. So it was just like, I have to go off of like what my dad said, what I've read, what yeah. I, you know, what I've well, learned over years. Well, there's video footage at least. Yeah, there's actually some video you know. footage of those guys. Yeah. But yeah, I, w I would love for the Blackhawks to have some sort of like physical like museum or something like that. It would be really cool. I think for fans, uh, especially as you start to garner in new fans uh, over probably the next couple of years um, for that history to be like cemented. They do a nice job as where, you know, we get to the game super early and we're usually in a press box kind of getting settled. And as fans are coming in, there's, they show on the scoreboard, like, history of the Hawks, like yeah. who this guy was, what he accomplished. But I, I haven't really noticed, but maybe they do do a Charlie Gardner. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it's a really good opportunity. We're, by the way, Blackhawks, I know you're listening. We know you're listening. For the 100th season, a top 100 Hawks of all time has to be done. And, oh, yeah. Why you not? know, we're doing it, so you can't. <laughs> Sorry, if you do that, we're suing you, Blackhawks. We are trademarking, our idea. just like we're we trademarking the Old Egg Monday. You guys can put in all the work, <laughs> but then you have to come on our show and reveal it. We'll yeah. do the reveals. We'll yeah. just the reveals. feel like the athletic for us. Yeah, sure. Just stealing content all summer long. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that. Um, okay, next up on the list, and see this. Now we're in top five territory, and now I'm in like, am I really putting this guy ahead of Charlie Gardner? But I guess we are. We did. <laughs> we did. Number five, Jocelyn Tebow. Yeah. There he is, drinking water on the set. <laughs> hey, he may not have been a better goalie than Charlie Gardner, but he looks better drinking water than Charlie Gardner. Sure, <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, so Jocelyn Tebow, six years with the Hawks, 
with some piss poor teams 137 142 and 37 a 905 save percentage of 2.62 goals against with 28 shutouts he was an all-star for the Blackhawks as well and when you talk about as we kind of did with the early days of Nikolai Javi Buin, Jocelyn Tebow was in a very similar situation yeah. where he's like, I, I can't, there's nothing I can work with here and I'm just going to do the best I can. And uh, I think underappreciated while he was here, yeah, because it was kind of right after the Hawks stopped being decent that he came in. Yeah. So expectations had not kind of gone down the way they probably should have. Uh, especially when you look at the rosters he had to work with. But Jocelyn Tebow was a, just a really good goalie, good dude, always with a smile on his face. He was one of my favorites. I've yeah. always loved Jocelyn. I like I like Tebow back when he was in Montreal because I remember my favorite video game, the two-on-two open ice challenge, Yeah, voiced by Pat Foley. He was the goalie for the uh, Canadians before uh, the watch oh, rate happened. Yeah. Um, and uh, Or after the watch rate yeah. happened, rather. And... Uh, Foley said his name wrong. It was like, Tibo, Tibo. <laughs> he said it weird. And uh, it always stuck with me. And uh, so I always kind of, it's weird how you kind of cl- like cling on to guys. Yeah. But I always liked him. When the Hawks got him, I was really excited. And uh, he worked out. Really solid goalie for the Hawks. Yeah, he was a guy that got put in a position to fail f- for being one of the guys in that return in the Patrick Watt trade. Um, Whoa. Nice job. <laughs> Jocelyn. It's fine. It's just vodka. No <laughs> <laughs> um, course. Yeah, under he there. started his career with the Quebec Nordiques, and then a little bit with the Colorado Avalanche. But he was in the return, the trade that sent Patrick Watt to Colorado. Yeah. So now you're a young goalie. You got to replace an absolute freaking legend. Yeah. Good yes. luck. Good luck, I mean, son. That's like you know coming. Sleeping Alexei Jamnov. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> like coming, getting traded to the Bulls, and having to take over for Michael Jordan. No matter what yeah, you do. Yeah, but being traded for Jordan. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what you do, it's never going to be good enough. And that was the case. And then, ironically, two of our guys on the, our top 10 list were traded for each other because Jeff Hackett, yep. number 10 on our list, was sent to Montreal as part of the package uh, of that big trade. But, you know, you look at Tebow's overall numbers, they're not great, but they're a lot better when you look at the actual In the roster. context, yes. Mm-hmm. Does anybody here or in our chat Remember Chris Herpinger? Nope. Well, good old number 36. Well, during the 2000 wow. 2001 right? season, he was the seventh leading scorer on that team for the Blackhawks. Sure. Sure, he with was. 25 points. Yeah. So oh, I believe it. They were some bad teams that he played for, and he made them much better uh, than they should have been. Yeah. And uh, solid goalie. Again, I, I'm with you. You're right. Nice. You're, 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 yeah, I am I weird in that way. <laughs> you're very weird because I didn't. They need to do a, a puck duke of numbers, and you'd be great. Hawks numbers. <laughs> oh, so, I'd be great at a numbers. Yeah, one. Hawks numbers. I, like, next summer, we should do a show where you guys throw players at me, and I'll tell you their numbers. Okay. I have a sickness. <laughs> I do too. If it's from like 95 and beyond, I you can I get could, it. I would probably go 95. Yeah. percent I don't remember Chris Herberger. He was bad. Yeah, I've never sure. heard that name before yeah. in my life. No, I, I don't remember him at all, but he was the t- seventh leading scorer when Jocelyn Tebow was the goalie. Yeah. Just to give you an, uh, an idea of <coughs> where what they he were. Had to deal with. <sighs> all right. Yeah. Who is a modern <laughs> Hawks equivalent to Chris Herpiger? Uh Boris Kachuk? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Different. Uh, I don't know. I'll get back to you. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get back to you on that yeah. one. Yeah. No, I, I am starting to, though, um, regret having Tebow over Charlie Gardner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, yeah. For me, for me, uh, Tebow was the, was the first goaltender I remember as being a Hawks fan. And yeah, understanding that he was probably one of the better players that they had of that time frame. Um, so that was why on my, on my personal list, he was probably, he was a little bit higher than some of the guys. And again, with, with Gardner, it's like you have the accolades there. You have this, the Stanley cup in 1934, but it was just like, uh, and, and the same thing happened for me with, you know, submitting, submitting the top 25 list. It was like, well, this is, my, this is a list to me. Like, right. I, sure, I, I can appreciate all the history of Charlie Gardner, but Tebow was first goaltender I remember being a, being a fan of. And, and uh, that impact, for me, feeling a little, a little bit more than just honoring history. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's all subjective. That's what these lists are. It's all opinion. Colin Blackwell? Maybe a decent Chris Herberger comp. Sure, if you say so. I don't remember Chris Herberger. You shouldn't. At all. 
<laughs> Nor should you. At all. Sure. I have black Only a sick individual like teams. me would remember that. In, I have in, in, in 20 teams. years, we'll have the same conversation about Colin Blackwell. 43. Um, <laughs> by the way, for our younger fans, go on the old YouTubes there after the show and look up Patrick Waugh's last game as a Canadian oh, where he was just trem- terrible. Yeah. Tremendous drama. And they drama. would not pull him. Yep. He makes a save and the puck's at his feet and he puts both hands up and cheers for himself, then clears the puck. They finally pull him after, I think, six goals. I thought it was seven, seven maybe. Seven, seven goals seven and goes goals. to the coach. He says, I'm never playing an effing game here no, again. He said it to the, he said it to the president. GM. Was oh, yeah, he's on the bench. Oh, yeah, he's on the front row. Yeah. He, he went, went up, the the went up yep. into the stands. He said, stands. I'm never effing playing for this team again. And that was it. Two days later, he was traded. And then what happened with the Avalanche? Stanley Cup and their inaugural season. Yeah. Because Patrick Waugh and Peter Forsberg and lots of other really good players were there. But Patrick Waugh was that missing piece, man. Oh, hey, that guy Patrick eliminated Wong so many the, good Hawks teams. And the Eric Lindros trade, those were two of the biggest reasons they won that uh, Yeah, they won that trade. Lebowski5 says Dean McCammon is the equivalent. Uh, Dean McCammon Dean was McC- better than that. Dean McCammon was on that team and finished sixth with 26 points. <laughs> so he was better. So, good old number 19. So it's it's the debate between, it's like Who the Gustav Nyquist, Thomas <laughs> Tatar bait, you know, but with... <laughs> With whoever the hell these two guys were talking about now. <laughs> I got to check my Dean, Dean McCammon, McCammon number. And, uh, yeah, Dean McCammon was 19. He was. I remember that. I remember God. Dean McCammon. Yep. It was Dean McCammon, and who was the other guy that kept flopping between the Hawks and the Oilers? Ethan Moreau. Oh, I love oh, yeah. Another 19. Uh, I yeah, love yeah, Ethan Moreau. I loved Ethan yes. Moreau. Ethan, he was a good player. Ethan, I always, then I always got confused when the Twins called up Justin Morneau, and I was like, yeah. is that Ethan Moreau's brother? No, <laughs> totally different name. Yes, I, I was a big Ethan Moreau fan. He's one of those random guys in Hockey Ultimate Team, too, that he's like, on the Oilers, he's like a 95 overall. Like, why? Wonderful. Who remembers Ethan Moreau? <laughs> I do, do, damn it. I've uh, There are uh, some local thrift shops that I like going to uh, in my spare time, because that's what I do, and um, I, there is a plaque of Ethan Moreau in a Blackhawks jersey that if it's still there, I will go and get it for you. Jay. Yeah, I'll pay for that. Yeah, I'll buy that from you. you. You can fork over the two bucks? Yeah. Nice. Handsome young man, too, if I recall correctly. $3. Yeah, good looking kid. Yeah, good there looking we go. guy. We'll put it on our wall next, right next to Derek Rose. Yeah. All right, now Same we're level. getting That's into, fitting. and I think, I think there could be some argument between number four and number three here. There's some debate. The t- Maybe the some top, recent The top bias. four, you can, you can get... Uh, a lot of different combinations. Our voting lists were different on the three four based on age. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. coming in officially at number four, one of the hockey players that made me fall in love with the game, Eddie Belfour. I mean, one of the best goalies of his era. Uh as all Blackhawks of the nineties was on those teams that were always second or third best to the best teams in a Western Conference mm-hmm. because of the unwillingness of management to go get that final piece, to go get that Brett Hull or go get that prime whoever yeah. to put the team over the hump. They were always one guy short of a Stanley Cup, and Eddie Belfour, I just talked about it, that series in 96 against Colorado yeah. in the Western semifinal where Belfour was making 50, 55 saves a game just to keep up with Wah. Wah won that series, but you could argue that Eddie Belfour was the better of the two goalies in that. He absolutely kept the Hawks in there. Uh, just a fantastic, fantastic Black Hawks legend. Uh, 201 games with the Hawks, 138 and 56, 2.65 goals against 903 save percentage, and 30 shutouts. Uh, Eddie Belfour, Hall of Famer, obviously, Stanley Cup champion, not with the Hawks. Um, just a legend. And when you look at his similarity scores, uh, you got a lot of Hall of Famers in there. Rogi Vachon, uh, Gump Worsley, Marc-Andre Fleury will be. Carey Price will be. Curtis Joseph somehow not a Hall of Famer. Very strange yeah, to me. He even mm. played for the Maple Leafs, too. If Tom Barrasso's a Hall of Famer, Curtis Joseph's well, a Hall of Famer. Well, Tom Barrasso just got it. Yeah, well. Yeah, Cujo well, should be been in. a long time. To he die. should be in on helmet alone. Cujo should definitely be in yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. He will be. He'll there. get there at some point. It seems like this year they started the trend of wronging the right of so many good goalies that played in the 80s and 90s. Because Barrasso got in, and who else got in? They put like in two goals. Uh, Mike Vernon. 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 Mm-hmm. And, yeah. obviously, Henry, Henrik. And Longquist. But there was yeah. no debate about that. Give me, give me Cujo. We're, it's a different show. Give me Cujo over both Vernon and Barrasso. Well, maybe next year's Hall of Fame class will have him in there. That's a good debate. Vernon played on a really good team. Yes, he did. And he was also really good. He was good. He was good. I might have to go Vernon out of those three. 
Maybe. Right, but I, I need some time to think about it. Well, I know it ain't Barrasso. Um, but Belfour, again, like, aside from just being really good, a total red ass. Yeah. You know, would hack you in the nuts, just, would go after refs. Like, he was... Just asked the locker room attendant in St. Louis <laughs> when he trashed it after yes. a playoff loss. Broke TVs. Yes. Smashed anything that, you know, was within 50 feet of him. I'd love to get him in here one day. It'd be great. And chat with him about his career and, and post-career and, like... Yeah. And I, I had to feel a lot, a lot of the guys of that era have to have some sort of bitterness. Like, man, we were so close. It's a shame that Belford never got his Stanley Cup here. Yeah. He went to, uh, to Dallas and got it and earned, and earned it. I, I was so happy they got it. Like, I, yeah. I had a hard time cheering for Dallas because, A, it was hockey in Texas and it was new. Right. And you can't play hockey in Texas. Blah, 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 blah. And it was the old North Stars. And I yeah. still hated the old North Stars. But Eddie Belfort was the goalie um was the goalie of like the teams that really got me to love hockey and this sport because it was like that was you know 12 to 17 yeah. years old that was when i was like all in you know and the day they traded him man that that trade just broke my it hurt even more than the ronick trade for ulf dowen and michael sakura Oh, that works. And Chris Terreri. Don't forget Chris, Chris Terreri. Good old number uh, 11 and number 6. You do have a problem. You really do have a Chris problem. Chris Terreri, I believe, 31. <laughs> 31. 31. Him of the lame helmet. Yeah, yeah. he had like the, just a plain black, like, cage. Yeah, like the Chris school. Osgood helmet. Yeah, yeah but mm. go Devils, though, back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so Belfour, the Belfour trade gutted me. That's when I was like, screw this team, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. I remember it happened, like, came out of nowhere. I remember I was listening on the radio to pregame. And they announced, like, Eddie Belfort's been scratched and has been, we believe he's been traded. And then as the game went on, you found out where. Wow. Like, what's the return? Ulf Dowen and Michael Sikora. And at the time, Sikora was, like, kind of an up-and-coming physical defenseman, but it never panned out. Uh, God, what a brutal freaking trade that yeah, was. it was bad. Hey, and uh, that's a good teaser. If you, We've got a top ten memorable trades list coming up later this week. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that'll be on there. Maybe just whatever, however old I was, just weeping in a corner in a fetal yeah. position in my parents' basement. That, yeah. Well, that's the thing about all those trades when you traded away Ronick, Chelios, Belfort in the span of three years. You got nothing for any of those guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah you got Zamnoff. I, I, no offense to Alex Zamnoff, great player, but none of those draft picks you got no, ever nothing, no, turned no, into no, anything. No. And you got nothing for Belfort. Right. Nothing for Belfort. And like you said, like. For us, uh, the older of the two of us on the show, that's when our hockey fandom was growing. And that, those 90s Hawks teams, they were cool. They were rock and roll. They were like Motley Crue on ice, you know? Yeah. Like, Anytime you got Jeremy Roenick and Chris Jones yeah. in the same building, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Even, but even, you know, Belfort was cool. And even, like, Joe Murphy was kind of a cool player. Like, they had a bunch of dudes with charisma, Riz, yeah. as the kids call it. And, uh, wow. you know, they were... A lot of the women like really liked Ronick. I really liked Chelios. So, like they were just they uh, were rock stars. Tony Amani. That was later. Yeah. But was yeah. Later? But st- but yeah. Still yeah. that that cultural impact that uh, that those Blackhawks teams had. Um, Old he, steel and ice, huge, baby. Huge part of it. Yep. Yeah. Steve Smith. I always, Barry Suter. I always remember um, an early episode of Seinfeld um, where. George is talking about his a leather Blackhawks jacket he has. He's like, oh, I love my Blackhawks jacket. And I'm always just like, this is like in the 90s <laughs> in New York. I'm like, they got the Islanders and Rangers, and they're talking about the Blackhawks. And it's like one of those things that like clicks. It's like, oh, yeah, it's like they, that team, like those teams of those, of those years, like transcended more than just like hockey. And even hockey in the 90s as a general, probably one of the most popular it, was ever, it ever had been in, in the 90s. Well, and you also talk about – you know, in terms of like pop culturally too, you had the NHL video games that were like taking the nation by storm, mm-hmm. and they were they were the Tech Mobile Bo Jackson or the Madden Michael Vick, where it's like you almost weren't allowed to be the Hawks because Ronick was too good. Yeah, you know, he was that perfect video game player where physical, fast, could score. Like you know, and they were almost a cheat code. Yeah, we we banned the Hawks in our yeah at. Uh, at- University of Iowa, University of Iowa, and, and, and playing the uh, Sega Genesis NHL '94, we wouldn't let people be the Hawks. Yeah, so and, if, people, and if you did want to be the Hawks, we're like, just look down on you because you just want Ronick. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like being Michael Vick. Like, yeah. Come on, come on, it's not fair. Yeah, not fair. So yeah, he's uh, that, that that team was they were the coolest man. That 
Uh, it just sucks that they never got to win a cup. It's 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 the more time that goes by, the more pissed I get. And you can kind of question whether or not Ronick's tears after the 2010 Cup were sincere or not. But he never got to do that. He's right. Never yeah. got to hoist a cup. Period. But to see the hit, the Hawks do, do it, it had to, it had to be yeah. meaningful for yeah. him. Uh, when he said a hockey ass, wasn't Tony Amani part of the Lamar trade? No, that was later that season. Uh, it was for uh, Stefan Matteau and Brian, Brian Noonan, Noonan, who we got. So that was a more of a mid-season trade deadline deal where Larmer was traded bef- uh, right after that season started. Yep. I and mean, technically, Larmer was not traded to the Blackhawks to the Rangers. He was traded to the Hartford Whalers for Patrick Poulin, who then traded him to the Rangers. Yeah, Patrick Pudwack. Yeah, uh, Patrick all right. Poulin. We're going to get to the top three here in a moment. But first, we want to tell you about our friends at FOCO.com. Get fitted out in the best sports gear around Hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, Patrick Poulan jerseys, and everything in between. <laughs> they don't have those. It's baseball season. Get your Aloha shirts, straw hats, polos, bags, everything you need for a game. And as the weather cools off and the Bears take the field, you know you can stock up on boots and hoodies and everything you need at foco.com. Take a look around our site. You can see some of the sweet stuff that they've given us uh, on the back shelf there all along the walls. We thank them for that. Check out foco.com. Or click the link in our description below for all non-presale items. Use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. That's right. And while you're rocking your banana hammock from FOCO over the yeah. last few days of summer, even though summer ain't going anywhere for a while, it's going to get hot as hell again yeah, next week. I know. I enjoy saw these, Enjoy yeah. these so 70s. I was so mad when I saw that yesterday. Yep, be we got, we got false next cool week. down. It's going to be hot as hell again next week. And you want to put on some Shady Rays so you can take on that evil sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays has you and your precious eyeballs covered for the very warm weather that's on its way with their premium polarized shades that come at a very affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. I say even better. Their durable frames and extremely clear optics are perfect for all of your outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on the first day, they're going to send you a brand new pair. Zero questions asked. You can wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you make your purchase. You're going to look great wearing them, and you're going to feel great, too, because Shady Rays is providing much-needed support to nonprofit partners across the U.S. through Shady Rays Impact. The money you use to buy your sunglasses helps build play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Shady Rays, with your help, is making an impact in your community and others like it now and for years to come. And if you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a brand new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There is no risk when you shop. And exclusively for our lovely, intelligent, beautiful CHGO listeners, Shady Rays is giving you their their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com, use the promo code CHGO at checkout, and you're going to get 50% off all your orders that contain two or more pairs of their awesome shades, rated five stars by over 200 and 50,000 people. That's a lot of people, a lot of stars. And hey, we want to also express our gratitude and thanks to our friends at Circle K for being a uh, partner with us here at CHGO. Check out your local Circle K for the best coffee, beer, and snack selections around, and of course, their premium gas. You can also look out for different freebies and giveaways down the road from Circle K. Thanks to them for sponsoring us here. Visit your nearest location to pick up all of your favorite finds to fuel you up for the summer ahead. Keep you cool on these hot days. Get yourself a nice beverage while you're filling up your gas in your car so you can go to the beach and wear your banana hammock and wear your Shady Rays. I wear a plantain hammock. That's that's your personal business. (laughs) Uh, They have baby carrot hammocks. (laughs) <laughs> okay um, I'm not sure Alright You have to check out Foco for I got those. all the hammocks <laughs> Top three Any hammock you need Now this uh, I think at this point It's pretty clear The top three are going to yeah, be Yeah you just need to know What sure. the order is And I think We got the top three right I think I like to think so uh, Number three Number 50 Corey Crawford Number three on our list But number one in our hearts F and right mm-hmm. Chicago Corey Crawford Number three on the list I mean I feel like as time has gone by, Hawks fans have finally started to recognize 
how important Corey Crawford was to the dynasty, how good of a goalie he was. He was not just a passenger yeah. on a great team. Was he the goalie of a great team? Yes. Most goalies of Stanley Cup winners, by definition, are goalies on a great team. Mm -hmm. But Corey Crawford won the 2013 Cup for them, you could argue. Sure. Right? Yeah. Like, Should have been the cons, Mike. He was outstanding. And, and for Patrick Kane, who won it that year, to say, thank you, but this should be Corey's, that means something. That's yeah. significant. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you know, and to, to to finish the 2015 run with a shutout at home in the cup clinching game, like that's you know a huge, uh, huge clutch moment for him. And and yeah, as time has gone on, you know, you think between the, you know the 2012, uh, the 2013 season, to even the season where it was his final year in Chicago, you know, there was very little that you questioned about Corey Crawford in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, from certain, you know, certain stretches of time from game to game, you'd be like, ah, he's a little shaky. All goaltenders go through that. But you look at his body of work and, and how important he was. And, you, and, Jay, you always talk about how Duncan Keith was so good you didn't even think about him. There were stretches of time where Corey Crawford was just so solid and so yep. stable that you didn't have to worry about him. And I think the organization – had that mentality too where oh well we'll just have Corey forever we don't need to worry about getting a goaltender and developing them and having a backup plan and that's why it's just like once he was gone it was like oh shit what are we gonna do like we don't have anybody that can fill these shoes um and I think that that is is why I think a lot of the as time has passed a lot of the recognition for what Crawford did while he was here in Chicago and 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 the impact he had has been like it, it's it's been growing more and more as the years have gone on that he's that he's been gone and even the year you know he the the year that he was that he missed half of the season because of injuries and everything and you know the start of his season was delayed and all that you you saw how much those teams needed him uh and and those teams uh, you know that won Stanley Cups needed him to be the elite level that he, that he was and yeah I mean never won a Vezina should have been at least considered for some of them um should have should have won a con Smythe. You know, you got two two Jennings trophies to his name, uh, a few All Star nods, but definitely is one of those guys that in in his generation probably one of the top five in the league. So Lebowski says, "I love Corey Crawford, but he was not better than Belfour." And I think there was a time where I would probably make that argument too. And I think the argument can be had. There's no doubt about sure. it. Sure. That, but when you look at the organizational leaders uh, for the Blackhawks, Corey Crawford third in wins behind Esposito and Hall. Uh, he is third all-time in shots against. He is third all-time in saves behind Esposito and Hall. He is second all-time in save percentage. You could argue first because first is Scott Darling yeah. with yeah. a very no, limited it's, sample it's Corey size. Crawford. Corey Crawford has the highest all-time. If you take Scott Darling's 9.923 save percentage out, Corey Crawford is second at .918 in an era where offense was up in comparison oh, to yeah. when Eddie Belfour played. Goals against average. Corey Crawford, if you take Scott Darling out of the equation, is second only to Charlie Gardner. Charlie Gardner, 2.02. .02, Scott Darling, 2.37. Corey Crawford, 2.45. Uh, Goal saved above average. He is fourth in Blackhawks history behind Esposito, Hall, and Belfour. I mean, like, he is right at the top of every list that exists for Blackhawks goaltending leaders, and not they're not all counting stats. Yeah, the shots against, fine. Counting stat, great, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But save percentage, goals against average, adjusted goals allowed, all those things, he's right there. And when you look at it, I could see the argument. But for me, when I made my list and I put Corey Crawford above Eddie Belfour, two is more than zero when it comes to Stanley Cups. Absolutely. And that, to me, is the tiebreaker. And these are my two of my all-time favorite Black Me too. Hawks. Yep. It was tough. But as I agree with Chris, our buddy Chris Dubiel, he's he said what I was just about ready to say. Overall career, Belfort's probably the better yeah. goalie. All fair. But as far as Blackhawk career goes, yep. as you said, two is better than zero. He got two Stanley Cups. Yes, he played on better teams, but Belfort was there. He got them to the Stanley Cup final. He got them close. Just never got them over. If uh, he had one cup, I'd flip him. Probably. And I, uh, sure. uh, but see, the thing about Crawford, and I compare him a lot to uh, Ryan Sandberg in baseball. Um, you know, Corey Crawford didn't make too many of those amazing highlight reel saves because he never had to. Yeah. He was one of the best positionally sound goalies I've ever seen. He was always there, square to the shot, just n n rarely ever out of position. If you caught him out of position, 
and you tried to run that play again later in the game, no way you were scoring twice on the same play. Ryan Sandberg got criticized a lot in his career. Well, he never dies for baseball because he never had to. Right. He was always in the right spot. They never made the spectacular highlight reel plays because they were so positionally sound and knew where the play was going that they never had to make the diving save or the sprawling, you know, uh, yeah. get the uniform dirty in Sandberg's case. So I, I compare those two a lot together it's just because they played their position so well that they never had to do the highlight reel stuff. And I think that hurts a guy like Corey Crawford in his national persona because we see all the great saves by Hasek and we see all the great saves by these legendary goalies. Crawford didn't make a ton of those. Again, because he never had to. Right. And if he was beat, it was everybody's beat. And Chris says, uh, Belfort's two Vezinas and a caller put him higher. Again, I, can, I, I see that argument, but I do think, as you sort of just alluded to, Greg, that sometimes these national awards that are voted on by hockey writers are reputation-based. And for a long time, that narrative that Corey Crawford was a bad goalie hung over him yeah. because of the way Pierre Maguire treated him during that 2013 Cup Final Blood that neck. he won. He right. won the effing series over the beloved and renowned and praised Tuka Rask. Mm -hmm. He was the better goalie in that series. That game where he gave up five glove hand goals, he Tuka Rask gave up six mm -hmm. from all different angles and all different holes. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, right. It's, it's – so – I think that reputation going into these individual awards, not to take anything away from them, of course they're important, but I think the argument between Crawford and Belfour, it really, to You're me, it, it's a coin flip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's a coin flip. Bottom line is both guys are on our Blackhawks goaltending Mount Rushmore. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And you don't rank that. It's top it's four best goalies in mm -hmm. history. They're both there. All right. We got two more to go. Uh, these two are very uh, probably easy to, easy to pick. Number two, Glenn Hall. I mean – as you go through Blackhawks history, he's basically number two in every category. Uh, <laughs> wins, uh, he's number two in losses. <laughs> wow! Yeah. When you play as, many as, games as you as do, when did. you play forever, <laughs> number two in saves, number two in shots against, uh, number three in save percentage, two percentage points behind Crawford, number two in shutouts. I mean, Glenn Hall, unbelievable. We talked about him last week when we did our Tough Guys series. Yeah of the consecutive game streak with no helmet, vomiting before every game due yeah. to nerves. Just an absolute badass. 502 straight games. That's yeah. insane. Seven and a half seasons of playing every minute of every game as a goalie. That's never going to be even close to being broken. No. Um, his nickname was Mr. Goalie. You don't get called Mr. Goalie unless you're a good goalie. Yeah. Uh, just to show he played all so long with the Hawks. Uh, after Detroit traded him, but they they had a pretty good guy there named Terry Sawchuck, so they he was right. They they were pretty good. Uh, he went on and they, he went, moved on to the St. Louis Blues in their their expansion draft. That's uh, and he went on in his first season to win the Vesna in St. Louis and lead them to back to back uh, Stanley Cup final appearances. Now, I mean, a little different. It's a little different because they took the new six teams and put them in their own division. Yeah. So it was the. The winner of the expansion six versus the original six. So those Stanley Cup finals for those first couple of years were just mismatches because yeah. it was an expansion team versus the freaking Montreal Canadiens right. of the 60s. But, but Glenn Hall was the guy that gave up the famous Bobby Orr, uh, the goal, the flying overtime goal. That was Glenn Hall. Well, we expect him uh, and we praise him for tanking the Cup finals for the Blues. Yes. Yeah. Double agent. Because of Glenn his loyalty Hall. to Chicago. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, all right. Number one on this list, no surprise, Tony Esposito. Number one in wins, uh, sh uh, saves, save percentage. He is way down. It's seventh. Different era. What a bum. Yeah. Um, I changed my vote. Adjusted allowed, uh, goals allowed, goals saved above average, minutes, shutouts with 74. Next closest is Glenn Hall with 51. 15 in his rookie season. Yeah. Another record that's not going to get touched. Yeah. Uh, Tony Esposito, aside from just being great, uh, a great dude. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest. A true yeah. innovator of the game in terms of equipment, in terms of uh, cutting corners and cheating now and again. <laughs> he did have the fish net between his legs yeah, hey. to help save those five whole goals. Up until then, there was no rule you couldn't, couldn't do that. Not cheating until you get caught. And he would, there's a rule against Well, it. they did <laughs> measure the pads, and he would unstuff the pads for the measurement, then quickly before the game restuff the pads. But... <laughs> Every goalie played that way. Every goalie looked for an edge. Patrick sure. Waugh wore a giant jersey to give him the wings to you know make saves. So 
Uh, but Tony O, absolutely the best goalie in Hawks history. As great, uh, this is all you need to know. As great as Glenn Hall was, there's no argument for Tony O is the best in history. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, it, he was an amazing guy to endeared by Blackhawk yeah. fans for a reason. Uh, I got the luxury to uh, the honor to uh, interview Tony, Tony Esposito. It was for a, a review of uh, Rocky Wirtz's book because he worked, wrote the foreword to that book, and. Uh, a 10 minute interview talked turned into like a 30 minute phone conversation because I asked him questions and then he started asking questions about me. Mm-hmm. And then he, you I ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> <laughs> you like Gladiators <laughs> movies, Greg? Um, so I mean, he just started because I, I had mentioned something about I was scouting at the time and then we started talking about that. And it was just, it was like talking to like my uncle, yeah, great guy, uh, big loss when we passed yeah. away a couple years ago, but no doubt the greatest. Blackhawks goalie, and I, I find it really hard for anybody to ever surpass him at this point. Yeah, Corey it's Crawford be tough. couldn't do it, winning two Stanley Cups. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to do it. No. Unless, you know, it's going to take a amazingly generational talent goalie uh, to do it. And he was great in those Binnie's commercials. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those ones. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all confused when a goal went off. They're great. Yeah. So fun. And I, you know what? Like you're talking about your interview, and you, you, you bring that up a lot, which is, and I know how meaningful that was to you. But I think sometimes athletes can play it off like, ah, you know, it's, I'm too cool for school. I don't want to reminisce. I don't want to talk. Tony O loved it. Yeah. He loved being Tony O. And why wouldn't you? You know, like, man, you're a legend. Everyone loves you. You're one of the best that's ever played the game. The dude loved talking hockey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for guys that, you know, and I think most hockey players do, but feel like, ah, you know, the media, they don't trust it, whatever. Tony O was there for you. If you, if you, had, if you had, want to talk hockey with Tony O, he was there. Never annoyed, never put off, happy to do it. Uh, truly a guy that loved the game. And, and man, what, a, what an awesome hockey player. Um, it's, it's one of those things we talk about. If we fire up the CHGO DeLorean, I'd go back and watch a 60s Hawks game at the yeah. Chicago Stadium mm-hmm. and watch those three, man. It would just be unbelievable. Yep. It would be special for sure. Yep. No doubt. All right. What do we got tomorrow? Uh, stuff 10 best defensemen in Ooh. Black Box history. Ooh. Spicy good one. Which I was s- no spoiler alert, but this was uh, we did six different lists that we voted on, and defenseman was one of only two that had a unanimous number one. Oh, interesting. interesting. Right. It had all three of us vote the same for first place. All right. Well, so that might be a spoiler, but that's gonna, okay. Well, I mean. <laughs> So be ready for 45 minutes waxing poetically on Everett Santa Pass. Yep. There you go. And if Enrico Ciccone's not on the list, I'm going to riot. <laughs> all right. You heard it. We're back tomorrow. Remember, allchgo.com to check out info on our upcoming Bears tailgates. We've also got the giant merchandise sale going on right now at chgolocker.com. All T-shirts and hats are $24. Jump in. Take advantage of that deal. And we're back tomorrow at 2 with the 10 greatest defensemen in Blackhawks history. Thanks to Lawrence for running the show and for participating, as always, on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.